Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again to another episode in this series here. Um, if you've been following the channel, you know that there's been a little bit of a, a hiatus or a little small break here in uh, my release cycle and I'd like to apologize, but uh, we had some we had some plumbers over throughout the week to find, uh, fix some very interesting issue, uh, but that's getting resolved now and so uh, should be able to kind of uh, get back to our, our normal release cycle. So in the last episode, I'm going to go ahead and run the app, but in the last episode we um, went over the database inspector here inside the Android Studio uh, IDE and basically how to navigate within it, what it offers, what it doesn't offer, and um, yeah, hopefully that was pretty informative. And then we kind of ran into not really an issue, but another way to present the same issue where, you know, we have uh, our data here in the database. Go ahead and look at it or if we wanted to, but if we were to update this information in the database, either edit this particular entry or if we add a new element to our database here, when we go back, we don't actually observe those changes. It's not until the app restarts um, or, or it's not until we kill the app and restart it that we actually, you know, pick up those changes to the database. And so if you've been following the series before, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And that's because here in our home fragment, the item entity list or the item entities live data is the data that fuels this information here. But if we take a look under the hood at what's going on here, this live data only gets um, modified in our init function, which is being called in the boot of our main activity in the on create. So basically when the app or when the activity boots up, we initialize all the information, we ask the database for what we have, and then that's it. You know, we don't care if we modify any of the information afterwards or if we add more information to the database, we don't um, have a way of observing that change. And so it's possible that maybe after we insert the item, we could, you know, refresh this basically, we could rerun this uh, function here to or, or this code to kind of post new information to this entity's live data. Uh, but there is something that's kind of built in to the um, Android Jetpack library that will make this, uh, I guess, make this observer or, the, or this observation a bit more intelligent and actually receive up-to-date, real-time um, you know, updates to the snapshot of our data, which at this point is basically the state of our database. So we can do so via flow. And so instead of our uh, entity DAO here getting all the items returning a list of them, we can actually have it return a flow, specifically the Colin X coroutines flow of the same type. I do not believe we need the suspend function anymore. And then basically we just need to modify here as well, the return type. So we'll go ahead and do that. And yeah, you see that the suspend modifier is now grayed out and it says basically it's redundant, meaning that it's useless in the case here. We're not doing anything that requires a suspension, at least at this moment. Uh, but then we're gonna go ahead and run into uh, this potential issue here. So right now, get all items and any of the uh, functions that we call downstream from here do not require uh, a coroutine scope to run in. However, to actually interact with the flow of data, we actually need to be within a coroutine scope. So at this moment here, items is going to be um, of type flow. And we can go ahead and call collect on that. And it will go ahead and uh, give us a block here of Go ahead and do that. Sorry, one sec. Calling collect is going to go ahead and give us a block of code here that's going to run anytime there's a modification to the database. So whether that means we're updating it, deleting something, adding something new, the uh, this block of code will run with a new snapshot of the data. This will go ahead and post to our live data which in our home fragment, we are observing it, and then we're gonna go ahead and put it inside of our controller and rebuild the screen and whatnot. So let's go ahead and just run everything, make sure we did it properly. Okay, so no compile time errors, no runtime errors so far. As you can see here, the home screen looks exactly like how it was previously. And then 
Let me try to get this so you can see this in real time here. But if we go ahead into our item entity database, we go ahead and find the description from the outside here. Let's say, uh, and another. We'll go ahead and hit enter there. Hopefully you heard the key press. And then here, while we're on the screen, we can see here that this actually updates to, you know, what it is, uh, what we've updated it to. If we go ahead and set this priority to one, which I believe is like the green, yeah, so this gets redrawn, all this information is updated, and now our priority is set differently. And so I'm going to also assume that if we add another one, we'll set it to media, oh, we'll set this one to high because we don't have it. We save things in our database. Again, we need to kind of clean this screen up here once we successfully save things. But then if we go backwards, we can actually see that the app has been updated here. We do not need to you know, have any kind of redundant calls or anything along those lines to tell you know, our, our, either our fragment or our live data, hey, you need to update itself. Flow does that for you. And so it basically can just observe the state of the database, any changes that it detects, We'll go ahead and basically post this new list of items in this block of code for us here, which we then just manage to bubble up to our view layer and uh, everything is all good and well. So at this point, we actually have a pretty reactive application. Uh, you know, whether we update something under the hood or whether we actually go ahead and, and add something to our database, um, uh, to our database manually, we have the app functioning and working as expected here. So we're starting to see the uh, beginnings of this app come together. And so let's go ahead and very quickly implement the delete functionality. So I believe we have this, uh, oh, it's called shared view model. Uh, delete our item entity. We'll go ahead and rerun that. I believe this, if we implemented it, it should get called Yep, on our delete image view when it gets um, when it gets invoked here. Uh, also, I don't know if we've covered this before, but for navigating around in the project, you can double tap shift pretty quickly, and it brings up uh, basically a quick way to kind of get into different classes that you know the name of. But if you uh, do command shift F, it will actually start searching the project for any of whatever you put in here. Uh, and so you can see here that there are different files that actually match this. So it's basically command F, but command shift F, and it applies to your entire project. So it's a pretty easy way to kind of snap between the different instances of where things are being referenced within your project. And if you go ahead and just like double click on it, you can open that file, but you can also, you know, actually modify things uh, in line here. So you don't actually have to open the file if you, if you know that. So again, that's command shift F. It is uh, super, super helpful. And so if I don't think I've covered that before, and if you were wondering where that came from, uh, that's, that's what happens. So if we go ahead and delete our item, you can see that we actually capture that on click of this uh, little icon. We run our delete item, which deletes that element from the database. It's gone, and then our UI updates as well. So we have built uh, a reactive application here. And there's a bunch more cleanup and a bunch more stuff that I want to get to, especially around epoxy and maybe headers or different ways we can sort this data, etc. So if that's interesting to you, um, you know, please subscribe, make sure to keep up with the channel and go ahead and smash that like button to provide some feedback uh, that you're enjoying the content so far. So thanks for uh, tuning in again. I hope to see you in the next one.